Hi there, hope you're having a good day. Welcome back to another video. We're talking about the GT Jump 2 today. Uh, this came after we had the GT Cut 2 last year. And soon we'll be seeing the second version of the GT Run as well. But they're calling it the GT Hustle 2. Nike, we need a GT flop. If you're gonna play around with these action verbs in basketball, flopping is an essential skill in today's game. The fact that the league is testing out a new rule against it just shows us how important it is. For me, I just might not be the target consumer of this greater than series. I don't run as much anymore. Hustle and cut sometimes. Jump, yeah, but not high enough. Flop is much easier, but I don't. Anyways, that has nothing to do with this being a great shoe this time. Jokic has been rocking it on the court, and this is the GT Jump 2. So these have a retail price of 180 US dollars, one of the more expensive hoop shoes for sure. You can cop from Nike in store or online. I think there's a pink colorway coming up too. For those that remember, I personally did not enjoy playing in the first GT Jump, while a lot of other people did. Yes, it was maximum cushion and bounciness, but it was just too much soreness for me over time. With the two, replacing the heel cushion with Nike React might seem like a downgrade, but this entire setup as a package just made perfect sense to me. So let's get right into some details and key things to know about its performance. They come in the same box as the previous version with the shiny GT Jump logo on top, plastic wrapping paper inside. On the first look, it's quite a departure from the first GT Jump, slightly lower cut around the ankle, and this time the heel features Nike React. It's a molded heel with a pretty thick piece of foam, uh, we'll get into how they feel on feet very soon. They added some air bubbles surrounding the collar area. And the upper material is what they call an engineer mesh. It's breathable and contains your feet well. But most importantly, the netting and stitching are not too plasticky. So it doesn't fold awkwardly. And obviously this is a deluxe cushion setup once again. With stacked up zoom air up front, exposed air units as before. Full length zoom strobo and all this on top of a jump plate. Looking at the also, this one has more of like a translucent also. A mix of herringbone patterns at the tip and irregular lines. If you really want to use these outdoors, I think you can, but I have only used these indoors. The weight wasn't as heavy as I expected. 470 grams on the scale for a size 10 and a half. Heavier than most shoes I have, but you know, given how much is in it and the spring-like build, it wouldn't even make sense if this was any lighter because they already did this like exoskeleton design to reduce unnecessary weight. To give you a reference, the Harden Volume 7 is 500 grams for the same size, so it's really not that bad. As to how the GT Jump 2 performs on the court, obviously cushioning is its main selling point. I would say this shoe turned out to be pretty much what the first GT Jump and the LeBron 19 tried to accomplish because compared to those two, the playability is much better. My favorite part is the heel cushion. It's bouncy and responsive, but with the thickness of the React foam at the back, you also get good comfort and impact protection. So I think it's a near perfect combination throughout the missile. You know, you can take off effortlessly and also land safely thanks to the React foam. I mean, with this shoe, it's got such a springy effect that even when I was just casually shooting around in them, I could easily feel the lift and bounciness on my feet. Moving on to the traction, I would say it's average. I was able to stop pretty consistently, but compared to, let's say, the LeBron 20, KD15, or some Wave Wave shoes that have amazing grip, this is average at best. Clean court, no problems. Dusty court, not the best. The also is not really a squeaky one, if that matters. Before I did these hard turns to test it out, I was honestly a little worried given how stacked up the shoe is. So even though I didn't have any major issues here, I think the overall build of this shoe, plus the way it moves laterally, still make it more ideal for bigs than it is for faster and more shifty guards. If you're someone who's prone to spring your ankle, it's probably not the safest option. With the fit, I went true to size and it fits me really well. Just the right amount of space inside, not too snug where it became uncomfortable. So I would recommend going true to size. Width is about average too. So with the stability and support, sorry, I just naturally wanted to compare this to the previous version and the LeBron 19. The air bubbles surrounding the collar area 
actually work well to support your movements. Instead of having like a sharp piece that flaps around there with no purpose. Breathability is decent. Uh, weight is again heavier than average, but I wouldn't say it's heavy to a point where it slows you down on the court. In other words, even though it is a shoe with stacked up cushion and technology, for the average consumer like myself, it's still fairly easy to use. Overall, I would consider the GT Jump 2 to be a great shoe uh, that lived up to the sender at that price point. It not only came as advertised by giving you crazy cushion and bounce, but also became more friendly to people who have different playing styles. Or I'll put it this way, for me as someone who the extra bounce might not directly benefit, I still very much enjoy playing in these without having too much soreness or discomfort over time. But as always, let me know what you think about these down in the comments. Are you excited for the GT Hustle or do you think this line is just overpriced in general? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.